Okay, so this video is going to explain how the journal entries are driving what goes on to the cash flow statement. So there's several different ways to tackle a cash flow statement, but this particular video is going to review all the journal entries that you've learned so far in Accounting 1 and 2 and show how it affects the cash flow statement. So I think it's a great exercise to really think about and use this time to review what's happening at these companies. So let's look at the first one. Starbucks Coffee issued 3,000 shares of $2 par value stock for $5 per share. So we're issuing stock because we want to raise money and so we get cash, that's why we issue stock, and the amount that we get is the 3,000 shares by the price that we issued it at, which is the $5. So we're going to say 3,000 times 5. And then the amount that we put to common stock is always the par value, which is going to be 3,000 times the par value, and it tells us it's $2 par value. The rest has to go to paid in capital in excess of par. The amount over par is the difference between the $5 and the $2. The difference between that is $3, so we say 3,000 times three dollars and we get nine thousand. We could have just said what number do we need to balance this entry and we would have came to the same conclusion. So let's talk about why we debited and credited what we debited and credited. Cash needed to go up because our company got cash. We make an asset go up with a debit. All of the capital accounts have a normal credit balance so they went up with credits. Alright so what does this do for our cash flow statement? So if we have memorized what goes on a cash flow statement, we were talking about the stockholder equity transactions down here, and they belong under financing. Now, under investing and financing, it's very simple to figure out if they are increases or decreases. Basically, if it made cash go up, it's an increase, and if it made cash go down, it's a decrease. So cash went up, so we're talking about a financing activity and we're talking about an increase. All right, let's look at the next one. Starbucks Coffee purchased 500 shares of its own stock for a dollar. Own stock tells us we're talking about treasury stock. So when we purchase it, that means that we paid out cash for treasury stock. So treasury stock is a capital type transaction but it reduces capital. So rather than having a credit balance, it has a debit balance. All right, we purchased 500 shares for a dollar per share, so it's 500 times one dollar. In this situation, we're still talking about a stockholder's equity section, so we're still talking about financing activities. But this time, we see that cash went down, so this time we're talking about, I wrote that the wrong one, a decrease for the cash flow statement. All right, number three. Starbucks Coffee sold 250 shares of Treasury stock for $2 per share. It originally paid a dollar for the shares. So, in this situation, we're still talking about Treasury stock, but instead of buying it now, we're reselling it. So when we do that, when we resell something, you get cash for it and you give up the treasury stock that you had previously bought, so we're going to reduce our treasury stock, and any amount over the original dollar that we get for this goes into an account called paid in capital treasury stock. Remember, when you're dealing with treasury stock, par value never matters. All you're doing is comparing what you paid for that treasury stock to what you're reselling that treasury stock for. So we got 250 shares times the two dollars because it says that we sold it for two. The amount to reduce treasury stock by is 250 times the amount that we originally paid for it and the remainder is the difference in the one dollar and the two dollars so 250 times one is the paid in capital treasury stock. Alright so we're still talking about the stockholders equity section of the balance sheet so we're still talking about the fact that this belongs under the financing activities for a cash flow statement, but this time cash went up, so it is an increase. 
Starbucks Coffee issued 5,000 bonds for $400,000. So we issue bonds for the same reason that we issue stock. We want money. The difference in bonds is that we have to repay it plus interest. So here we go. We got cash. That's why we issue bonds. 500,000 bonds for 400,000. All right, so we got 400,000. And we have bonds payable that we have to pay back at the par value of the bond, which is 500,000. And whenever you issue bonds for less than what you have to repay them for, it goes to an account called discount on bonds payable. And to be correct, I would have actually put my discount up above it because put your debits together, but I didn't know if I was going to be having a debit or a credit, so I did it in, out of order. All right, um, and in the interest of making this under 15 minutes, I'm going to keep going. So, we got cash of 400000 and that's all we care about when it comes to the cash flow, because this is showing us where our cash went and came from. So, if you look at the little sheet to memorize, not only does stockholder equity section go under financing, but also long-term liabilities, such as bonds, belong under financing. So we are still talking about the financing section. Cash went up, so this is an increase. All right, we redeemed bonds. That means we paid them off early, and the unamortized discount at that point was $25,000. So we need to get rid of what we owed them, and we owed them the face value of them, which was... 500000 so we need to get rid of that about balance. We had an unamortized discount of 25000 so we need to get rid of that. Discount had a normal debit balance, so to get rid of the remaining balance that's left at this point in time, we would credit it for the amount that they tell us our balance is. That's going to get rid of that count. And it tells us that we had to redeem the bonds early for 300000 So we're not in balance at this point, and the reason is because we either have a gain or a loss on the early redemption of bonds. So I have 325 on this side, 500000 on that side. So in order to balance, I'm going to need a credit of the difference. which will be 175000 and that is a gain on the early redemption of a bond. Now, you, don't, you could have calculated that by comparing carrying value to the amount that you had to pay the proceeds, and that would have also told you that it was a gain on early redemption of a bond. So how do we report this? Well, first, we need to remove the gain that showed up in our income because this gain was not cash from operations. So we're going to remove that gain from operations. So the operating activities is going to be remove gain. Gain was a plus, so to remove it, we minus it. And the second portion of this is the fact that we are talking about a long-term liability, which tells me that it's financing. And what did cash do to that long-term liability? It went down, so it's going to be a decrease for $3,000. So the operating activity decrease would have been for the gain amount and the um, financing would have been for the 300000 Okay. Now, given the following partial balance sheet and income statement, Journalize the cash dividend paid for the current period. So what we have here is the fact that our retained earnings went from 600 to 620. And we know that net income should have increased it, and it did, by 630. So if I look at what happens inside of retained earnings, this is what I'll find. Retained earnings has beginning of the year, and it was 600. Then we add net income, which we can see from our income statement, which was 30. And then we would subtract dividends. 
And we're not told what they are, but we do know what our ending retained earnings is. And our ending retained earnings is 620. So from that information, we can figure out that our dividends must have been $10,000. because that makes us get down to the 620000 So let's talk about what our dividend journal entries look like now that we know that our dividends that we paid out were $10,000. So the first journal entry for dividends is going to look like cash dividends and then dividends payable, $10,000. Then we pay that on the date of payment, which looks like dividends payable cash, $10,000. That right there tells us what to do to our cash flow statement, which would be the fact that we are under the stockholders equity section telling us that we're financing. Cash went down telling us that this is a decrease of $10,000. But let's keep going because so far I have not explained to you in journal entries how this retained earnings got affected by these dividends that we know did. Well, that would happen during the closing process. So on the closing entry, which is where we close dividends to retained earnings, what we would do is we would debit retained earnings, which would reduce retained earnings, and we would close this cash dividends account. Notice it had a debit balance, so to close it, we would need to credit it. So we would debit retained earnings by 10000 and we would credit cash dividends by 10000 that's why retained earnings went down by that 10000 Let me show you where it did that. There it is. Here's how it happened in my journal entry. So again, you didn't need to know that to figure out the effect on your cash flow statement, but you did need to know that to understand why I was able to look at retained earnings to figure out how much my dividends were. I could do that because retained earnings is affected by two things, net income and dividends. All right, on this one, sold equipment with original cost of $8,000 accumulated depreciated of $7,000 for a $3,000 gain. If I sold equipment, I got cash. Cash goes up for, I don't know how much, but I'll figure it out by this information. I sold equipment. I need to get rid of um, the items related to my equipment. So accumulated depreciation needs to go away. Accumulated depreciation has a normal credit balance to make it go away. I debit it. And equipment needs to go away. And I need to recognize a gain. All right. How much accumulated depreciation needs to go away? $7,000. How much equipment needs to go away? Original cost of $8,000. It tells me I had a $3,000 gain. So from this information, I can figure out how much cash I must have gotten. On the credit side, I have 11000 On this side, I have 7000 So I must have gotten $4,000 in cash because that makes my balance my entry balance because this is 11 now and this is 11 So my cash is 4000 All right, so what does that do to the cash flow statement? Well, sale of long-term equipment is a long-term asset and I sold it, so we're talking about the investing section. Cash went up, it's an increase of $4,000. All right, and then I need to remove my gain from my operating section because I remove gains and losses from operating. So operating, remove a gain, gain goes up, so I need to remove it, so I decrease it for 3000 all right, we've got another investing one here. Purchased equipment costing $30,000, paid $10,000, and financed the remainder over three years. So I got some equipment, and it cost um, a total of $30,000. I paid out cash of $10,000, and I financed the rest over three years, so it's a note payable, and the rest would have been $20,000. So... For this entry, all I'm concerned about is the amount of cash I paid for a long-term asset. So it's investing, and the cash amount is $10,000, and it's a decrease because I paid it out. So I'm only concerned with the cash amount paid. All right, so accrued salary says that I have salary expense and salary payable. 